Hello there, everyone, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program. Uh, after our week of complete and utter failures to reach Minmus with a sufficient electric charge, I've concluded that I just don't have the technology electrically to reach that planet. So, we are going to move on with some other projects. So, I'm pretty sure, just to be clear, we've, we've in, as far as Kerbin is concerned, I think we've exhausted everything short of the EVA report. Because all we're missing is the EVA, and I don't know if EVAs are uh, over Kerbin are biome specific or not. We'll find that out pretty fast, but I don't have the tech for EVA yet, and I don't have enough science to unlock it. So I'm thinking what we need to do is we need to do a seismometer lander for the moon, which really means we should probably have, well, maybe we might not need the landing struts. You know what? We might be able to do it with the tech we've got. Might get this if this first attempt doesn't work out because the alternator could be handy. But for now, it kills me that we're two science short of buying two of these techs. That would make this so much easier. So, not in there, in here. We are going to design a completely new ship from scratch here today. Starting with a uh, small research lander. I wonder what it requires to properly settle this on a firm surface. If it just requires a lander or what? Well, I guess we'll find out. And we'll go with angle snap. There we go. Four seismometers. Yeah, we'll go with that. And antenna. It'd be nice if we could just center it perfectly, but we can't. All right. So there's our actual landing craft, I think. What is this? Oh, hello. Yeah, that's right. I got to go in to unlock that. That's for uh... <laughs> Flower Child's Amateur Magician Supply Emporium. Brilliant. All right. I'll get that later. It's not going to do me any good with a moon lander because there's no atmosphere over there. All right, control. We'll need an RCS tank specifically for landing. Four of our lovely little... Actually, we'll put six of our lovely little RCS thrust blocks on there. Two RCS fuel, maybe. An inline stabilizer. Yep, that's about all we got right now. Ooh, and batteries. We need batteries. Eight batteries on the lander. So th this is theoretically our landing rig right here. Plus the... So then we throw on a not, yeah, control. Stack decoupler. Because we'll kick off this next stage, which is going to be a little low power lander stage. Low power, low fuel wet, low mass. For this is also an experiment for future Kerbal landers. So I'm if I'm overbuilding this, that's why. It's really just an the intent is to try and experiment with a Kerbal lander system. Alright, we'll make this one a third bigger. If I had fuel crossfeeds, that would be perfect, but in the meantime, this will do. And then we need four of our little tiny poodle or pre poodle engines. I just I'm just having a blind moment a blind day today, apparently. Alright, and then some struts to give it a little stability, and then we'll test this thingy majobber out. This shall be called the Size mom, the size lander mark one. Size 
So we'll take this thing and we'll see how structurally sound it is. Oops, that does not look very good, does it? Not that I'm, you know, there we go. So ideally we kick this off and use RCS to land ourselves the rest of the way down, which means we should probably put that RCS closer to the, uh... oops. Closer to the bottom here, maybe even on the inline. Uh... There we are. Full eight RCS thrusters, two tanks of fuel, probably way more than we need. So the question is, how well is this going to handle in a Kerbal atmosphere? It's cool that the connections reestablish. Okay, let's let's see what happens when we put it down on the ground. Well, it holds together pretty well. Let's give it some throttle, and let's give her some launching. All right, so it can lift in curve and atmosphere fairly well. That's okay. I think maybe we will cut it down to the smaller tank here. I think that was slight overkill. And then that would be our landing system here. We do our final touchdown with RCS here. It says here in fine print. But all in all, a reasonably successful test of uh, the rig. That's actually got a lot more guts to it than I was um, expecting. I'll take it, I'll take it, I'll take it. All right, space center. Uh, revert to VAB. So that served its purpose. We'll just do a couple of quick tweaks on the design here. <sighs> so my instinct that this would only need the smaller tank was right, because honestly, if these things yeah, you see, that's what I wanted in the first place. I don't know why it's being so stubborn about it. Central engine. See, the interesting thing is if I can land this without actually having to separate this bottom stage and use the RCS alone, um, will be quite interesting to see. All right, so that's that. Almost anchored in place. We just need one more strut back on here. There we are. All right. So uh, what we're going to throw on top of here is a. Let me see what what was it structural we need. That's an adapter. This is a. We don't want an adapter. We want a. Docking port. Did we ever get? Did docking port tech get moved down? I can't remember. Uh, no, definitely no. 
That is not a docking port. Couplers. Sub assemblies. Utility. Heat shields. Ooh, Docotron. Okay, that is exceptionally oversized. Okay. We won't worry about that. We will not worry about that at all. Okay. So next thing up, we need to get this thing actually into orbit and transitioned to the moon. Because this is going to be a mooner probe. That's the idea here. So we have to have a pretty heavy lift system here. Let's see. We'll, we'll throw a... I've, there's a trick for getting a... Um, nose cone on a ship and not wasting energy trying to transport it from system to system. And that's pretty much it right there. That would go, that'll go in the same stage as one of our early atmospheric separations. Okay. See, the other option is to put the bigger tanks on these five and use this as simultaneously you know what that actually might be more sensible use this as our yeah let's do it that way now that i think about it let's use the full-sized tanks like so and this will be our landing unit and our orbital transmission translation unit The word slight overkill comes to mind, but I think... I love these struts so much. Just FYI. There we are. And then we'll need an RCS thruster on each of these to give it a little extra control. That should help a lot there. And then... Actually, we'll need a little extra RCS fuel on these. No, we'll put it in the uh, sub-stack here. If things go according to plan, this will be our pre-orbital RCS. This thing looks a little like a monstrosity. You're probably right. You know what? I'm not all that worried about it. I'll anchor it right there. There we are. Okay. Now we have to get this monstrosity into orbit. I'm not sure if these are going to be what I want to use or... Well, with five of them, I had a lot of power, though. I think I'm going to go with my original. I'm, I'm just rethinking things here. Don't mind me. We're uh, designing on the fly here. I just have this feeling that I want to go little for the actual Mooner component. But not that little. <sighs> just just thinking this is, I don't usually like designing on screen for exactly this reason I start you know pondering possibilities and designs and all that jazz and Throw a ooh quad coupler. Interesting possibility has a has arisen. If we smack a quad coupler on there instead, 
the only thing that could get really screwy will be the bottom, the core bottom stage. So there's our orbital burn stage with LV4s. Now the problem is with this configuration, and this is the part that always gets me, is how do you get the final stage on here? It just does not work the way I would like. Four of those. Yeah. You and four friends. Come on, there we are. And then another round of strutting. So theoretically, this will be the, the stage that burns us most of the way into orbit. My theory is if I can overbuild this, I might be able to smack, slap a crew capsule on top of it and use it as a curb and return, uh, potentially as a curb and return vehicle with that much power in it. Okay, and then vertical. This, this is see, this is the designs that are not possible with the um, without these uh, adapters. And then we need our lift stage. So we go lift. We need a separator. There we are. And then we need six of those. No kill like the overkill, I'm sure. Come on. Look, I know this works. Don't be stupid. Fine, we'll do it this way. Perfect. And then we'll anchor you guys together as well. Like so. Like so. And... Like so. Oh, cool. Not entirely helpful, but... And... Like so. for what little surface... Oh, this should have been six, not four. Okay. And then we just throw on the winglets for aerodynamics. Ha! <laughs> aerodynamics. Hilarious. Okay, RCS. We are a little short on RCS because of a loss of tech as we were designing this thing. So we'll want RCS there and RCS there. We aren't going to have nearly enough RCS fuel for our purposes, which is really unfortunate. It means they're going to have to squeeze one more tank in here probably. Actually, let's see, if I put those up there, nah, if I need them on that stage, things aren't going well. Okay, let's cram those in there. Whoa, that went a little psycho, didn't it? Still connecting to there. 
Everything else is good, and we'll squeeze that in there. Okay, staging check. So, this one, which is this guy right here, is going to get kicked off with the pre-orbital stage, probably. It'll be interesting to see how much damage it does as I kick it off. So that one, and that one will fire at the same time. That'll fire at the same time as those engines. And that'll fire to remove the RCS thrusters. And now all we need is not being stuck in the floor. And some structural support for launch. All right, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> The Seismo Lander Mark I for the moon. This will either be, well, regardless of how it goes, it will be hilarious. Some of these have attached really strangely. It's the one downside to having variable, uh, um, what you call it, uh, mirroring as you put those on. They get a little funny. Okay. Well, let's see how stable. Whoa. All right, throttling up 50% because that's all those big tanks can handle. Launching in three, two, one. Um, yeah, I know what went wrong. I've made that mistake before. <laughs> you all were watching. You saw it. Boop. Still the Mark One. I. I haven't redesigned it. I just fixed the staging. This is the Mark One, take two. All right. Launching in three, two, one. Lift off. Lovely. Oh wow. Okay, that's not bad. I hope I got enough batteries on that for one transmission. It should only need to work for one transmission. This is the important thing for the uh, uppermost stage. I might have needed two batches of batteries uh, to keep the charge higher, but you know what? At this stage I'm mostly interested if this thing's even going to bloody make it to the moon. And it only has to make one transmission, because the seismometer is a, a lander. It's not going to go and hit multiple biomes. Well, I suppose it could if there was a crap ton of uh, um, fuel left.
apoapsis is rising nicely. rotate ourselves to perfectly horizontal, wait a tiny bit of time. Of course I didn't put a, that uh, we'll wait until it's one minute away here. Nice and stable. All right. Engines up. Okay, we really don't want to be adding height to the apoapsis if we can afford if we can avoid it. If we can cut these engines, less than three quarters of a tank left, are they worth hauling all the way to the moon with me? Probably not, from the looks of things. Alright, we'll cut the engines as the periapsis just comes into sight and see where we are at. see what we got here. Yeah, let's do it that way. So what we'll do is we will ditch that. Burn away just a little. And then we will wait until we're right at the apoapsis here to do our final orbital push. And then we will... Alright, here we go. Swinging around, swinging around, swinging around, swinging around. All right, we need to put ourselves on. I actually probably should have kept that uh, mono propellant now that I think about it. Oh well, I actually probably should put the mono propellant on this stage. All right, and that's probably the time to burn our apoapsis, periapsis, out of the atmosphere. Let's get a little closer to the apoapsis here. Turn and burn. Not bad at all. Not bad at all. We'll hit over 100. That'll do. Okay. Success. We have an orbit. Alright, let's head for the moon. But I think. Probably with the design and everything, that's probably an episode's worth, so I'm going to cut it here, 
and in our next episode we will plan our shot at the moon and see what happens. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.